Hello. There's a mutant gene called FOXP2 that we picked up early in our history that turned humans into creatures with language. And once we had language, we started creating words and signs and symbols. And then we started writing. And writing is a whole lot like telepathy, and we can use it to extend ourselves. Uh, we can extend ourselves through time and space through writing. Once we had writing, we started thinking about other tools that we could use to extend our capabilities, our social capabilities, the way that we could connect with each other. And we started this progression, this great progression. The printing press came along, invented by Gutenberg, and it became the origin of mass media because there were just a few of them. The means of production was scarce and there were a whole lot of things being created and pumped out to people. And that evolved into what we had, like in the last century, broadcast, few to many, very few people had the means of production and were sending it out to many people everywhere. And we all know, we grew up with those assumptions. We grew up with the assumption that there's a few guys up there who are dumping information on a bunch of us down here and they're in control of that. And that was the world as far as we knew. That was the world as we knew it. And then the internet came along. Wow! The internet came along and instead of few to many, we had the opportunity to have many to many. Everybody could be talking to everybody else and it was flat and it was in all directions, really crazy. Suddenly you have people able to have a, a really true meeting of minds. They can pull their heads together. Uh, I don't mean to sound techno-utopian, though. It's not perfect, but it is, it is a, a very interesting and much better thing. There's a guy named Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, a Jesuit priest, who talked about a kind of global brain. He called it the noosphere, a global consciousness. And many of us early in the Internet's evolution thought, this is what it's going to be. Now, it hadn't really been as great like that. Early in my history online, when I was on the well, it felt like there was some real engagement, a real sense of community, that people were really connecting with each other. But I haven't really had the same feeling from Twitter and Facebook because it feels like the conversations are more drive-by. It's like they're very fragmented and kind of unsatisfactory, not having the same experience that I had where it was like a more collaborative environment. Google Wave has come along, and I'm feeling some of that sense again. I think Google Wave is a very interesting mashup of patterns that we have seen through the Internet over the years that have evolved, like collaborative editing, uh, kind of like forums, kind of like email, kind of like uh, real-time chat conversations. All those kinds of things are mashing up on there, and it's becoming a very interesting, truly collaborative space. Now, there are some people who think that Google Wave really sucks, you know, but yeah, there's one. But I think it's the wave of the future. I really think that Google Wave has great possibilities to evolve into the many-to-many -many thing when it has better adoption and when it's cooked for a while. And then we have this mass collaboration that changes everything. And Wikinomics, they talk about these new ways of thinking about, like, uh, peering, you know, the peer-to-peer uh, environment that we can now have where we can all sort of link arms and connect and have a real engagement and do a real sort of flat, lateral, person-to-person -person, uh, collaboration, very ad hoc. We can come together in situations ad hoc and now we have locative technologies, uh, augmented reality that allow us to find people like find our friends, you can see who your friends are in here using certain kinds of like foreplay or bright cut or whatever. Um, <laughs> and then there's these great collaborative workspaces like conjunctured, co-working. Think about what it would be like if you walk into co-working and you can see exactly who's there and what their capabilities are. Maybe you just see the capacities and these are the capacities that you need to build your workforce, to build your team so that you pull a bunch of people together and the next thing you know you're out and running with an ad hoc collaborative uh, organization. Now I think the future of social 
It's like these starfishes, cut them off and they grow back an arm, that sort of thing. But it won't look that different from today, but it will be at the social buzz level, very different. Thank you.